Awesome. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to our first academic webinar of the 2023 fall term. Um, today's speaker is Carol Spencer, and she will be presenting a webinar uh, on managing competing demands. So Carol has worked at Johns Hopkins University since 2016, and she joined the Health Promotion and Wellbeing Office as a health education specialist in January of 2022. Her areas of special interest include emotional and mental health programming, imposter phenomenon, sleep hygiene, social connectedness, and supporting individualized well-being goals with learners. And just so you all are aware, health promotion and well-being cultivates and supports holistic well-being for individuals, relationships, groups, and the Johns Hopkins community at large across all schools and divisions. So let's welcome Carol Spencer and we'll turn it over to her. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Zoe, for that introduction. And welcome everyone. As Zoe mentioned, I am a health educator. Um, I have a master's in counseling, but I am not a licensed therapist. And so um, we will talk about my, my role and resources um, at the end of the presentation. Um, and just know that I do meet with um, learners individually um, in consultation about all those topics that we mentioned. So supporting your well-being. Um, so welcome everyone. I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, I'm going to presentation mode here. Okay. Um, so there's my contact information again, Carol Spencer. And let's look at, you know, I am in health education. So we like to have, um, give you an idea of what you're getting yourself into. Um, and we like to have outcoming learning outcomes. Um, so as a result, you'll be able to identify the barriers to changing your work life or academic life harmony. Um, create one smart goal related to reprioritizing your time. Um, select two or more actions that you can take in the next week that will facilitate your personal, professional, or academic and or interpersonal successes. And then identifying the central location for all JHU wellbeing resources, and then listing two resources for mental health and one resource for health promotion. Again, so you have an awareness of those resources that are available to you. And so um, this is a relatively small group. So I would love to take this time. Um, I introduced myself. Um, I would love the um, engineering for professionals, um, learners to um, introduce yourself. We see your name, but um, you can use your name and then um, maybe let us know where you're joining from. Um, and maybe, um, let's see, maybe like a fun fact about you, if you don't mind. I'll go. I'll go. I'll lead us off. And uh, yeah, my name is Jim. I'm from uh, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. And a uh, fun fact: I don't know if this is fun, but I'll give it. You know, I I joined uh, CrossFit a, a few months ago, so I'm going like three days a week. It's I like it. I think it's fun. So. That's great. Thank you, um, James. Can you pick the next person to go? Absolutely. Um, how about Jenny? How about, uh, I'm going to probably mis mispronounce this, but Sosina? You were very close. Um, hi, my name is Susana Tolosa. Um, I am, I currently reside in Nashville, Tennessee. And fun fact about me, I speak two languages. I'm hard in English. Wonderful. Did you want me to pick the next person? Please. Uh, um, how about you, Austin? 
Sure, I'm happy to go. I'm Austin. I am. Uh, I work for the Center for Learning Design and Technology at Hopkins, and I'm doing tech support for this event. Um, and I also am a faculty member in the EP program, so I wear those two hats. And uh, trying to think of a fun fact. Um, we have a uh, lemon tree, my wife and I, in our backyard. We live in Southern California, and we have a lemon tree in our backyard. And uh, a few months ago, we picked 97 lemons off of our lemon tree. So we have to, we've been looking for so many lemon recipes um, to make use of all these lemons. Oh, these are great fun facts. We've got CrossFit, we have multiple languages, we have lemons. Lemon is one of my favorite scents. I wish I, I wish I had a lemon tree. Um, we'll, we'll send you some lemons there. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to ship them to Maryland. Um, <laughs> pick um, Austin. Can you pick the next person to share? Sure. How about Anisa? Hi everyone. My name's Anisa. Um, I'm based out of Columbia, Maryland, and. Um, a fun fact about me is, oh, I can't think of anything, but um, I used to have pet goats. I live in the suburbs of Maryland. Um, so we used to have um, goats and then we found out that there was like regulations about that stuff. So, we, you know, like people had chickens. So we were like, we like goats, so why not? Um, and we kind of had to give the goats back to the farm that we got them from, but they're happy. We visit them still. So, yep. Um, I think um, I'll pass it on to Stefan. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen. I'm in Baltimore. And I guess my fun fact is that I live just a couple blocks from Homewood campus, but I'm an online student. That's great. Stephen, can you pick the next person? Uh. I guess Jenny, if Jenny is on now. If not, then I guess Zoe. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Zoe. Uh, I work in the EP leadership office on student success. So I work on programming to make sure that you get what you need out of the degree and that there's not any issues for you or barriers for you in finishing the degree. Um, I'm currently in Baltimore. And a fun fact, uh, I don't know, gosh, I like to garden. I don't know. I'm going to do a couple hours of gardening after this. So I think we just had one more person join. I don't know if they've been able to finish joining though. Julia, I don't see her in here yet, but we can ask her to introduce herself once she joins. So, Okay, great. And um, I do have a couple questions from the chat. Um, once I get going, though, I am going to ask either Austin or Zoe to monitor the chat for me because I'm horrible. Well, I multitask a lot, but I'm not great at monitoring the chat and presenting at the same time. Um, Jenny has said she does not have her mic plugged in. Um, and so that is why uh, they were unable to um, speak when we were asking them to introduce themselves. Um, and then Austin had a question, Aniza, about your goats. Did you did your goats have names? Aniza DM'd me. Yes. Uh, the name <laughs> yeah, of the goats. I, I Only I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So their names were Hedra and Mirza. My sis, my younger sister named them. Um, she was like really inspired. So. I was just like, okay. <laughs> That's great. Well, um, it was so um, good to meet everyone and from all different places, a couple of us, um, a few of us here in Maryland, but others um, a little further away. So it's so interesting, I think, to, to find out where everyone is joining us from. And uh, we'll be sharing more of ourselves throughout the uh, presentation, this webinar. Um, but, you know, so first let's, um, you know, this webinar is called Managing Competing Demands. 
Um, we all have so much pulling at our attention. And many times we have heard, I think you saw in the learning outcomes that I said, work-life harmony or academic life harmony. Um, I struggle with work-life life balance because when I think of work-life balance, I think of a scale and I think of it being equal. And honestly, I don't want my work and life to be balanced um, in that way. Uh, that's just my take on things. Um, so again, I've tried to, I've started calling it more like work-life harmony, something that you're good with. And so, um, you know, a question I have for you all, just to think, you know, some introspection. Um, are you striving towards the ideal future? Are we constantly chasing that goalpost? Or are we finding fulfillment in the present? I think, um, you know, it's so important for us to think about, um, I teach mindfulness as well. And we talk about being fully present in the present moment, not thinking ahead and having anxiety about what could be um, and future things, future worries, and then also not dwelling in the past and having maybe regrets or shoulda, coulda, woulda, um, you know, learning from those experiences, of course, but being present in the moment and finding joy, happiness, fulfillment in our current situation. So I invite you to start thinking that way. And um, then let's just think, um, let's brainstorm here. What are your competing demands? What's going on for people? What do you have pulling at your attention? And you can put them in the chat. We have a small group. I'm good with folks um, unmuting and calling out. Um, Jenny, you can put in the chat without a mic. So what do people have going on? I know I have work. I have a family. I have um, two adult children who are at college um, and one in my home who actually just opened, opened the door to the office, even though I have a sign that says, do not disturb. I'm, I'm doing something for work. Um, and that's fun. But he, he didn't make any faces at me. I didn't turn. So I don't know. Um, but dad's home and dad can handle whatever it is that he needed. Anyone else? What What's what are your competing demands? What do you have going on competing for your attention? For me, I was recently uh, promoted and I, I moved to the greater Philadelphia area. I was working the capstone um, last year and then I had some health issues. So um, like I had to take a, a little bit of a break. So I'm picking that back up. And um, so that has my focus. And then um, so work, the capstone. And then, um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, going to CrossFit. Um, certainly a girlfriend, too. I have a, a new girlfriend in the last, you know, three months. It's uh, we're in the honeymoon stage, so there's not much work there at this point. But uh, but it's it's still like just trying to have that balance. Great. Thank you. And we've got some things in the chat. Um, uh, so Sina uh, said mostly work uh, is pulling at her. Um, Stephen, school, work, family, fitness, health, friends, church, travel, fun. Yeah. All of it, right? Good. That's right. You know, there, I have some things that potentially could be pulling at you. I know we hit on this, you know, relationships, whether it be with a significant other or whether it be familial, um, you know, friends, family, all those kind of relationships that can be work um, for sure. Like, I mean, it's great, but it can also take work. Um, exercise, sure. Taking care of yourself in those ways. Um, how about cooking, shopping? <laughs> all the errands. Um, yeah, your academic work for sure. Your, your career. Um, and Jim just shared he got a promotion. Congratulations. 
Um, the commute, yeah. I live 50 minutes north from um, my work and uh, I work downtown on the medical campus for Johns Hopkins. And um, yeah, that commute, it um, I have to account for that in my planning, right? Managing finances, I mean, that takes time, right? So these are all things that could be pulling at us at any given time. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to talk about competing demands, uh, things pulling at us in all different directions um, without mentioning the effects of too much stress, um, right? So we know that we all experience stress to some degree every single day of our life. Um, but it could be as little, you know, stress can be defined in so many different ways. Um, we can think about stress as just, uh, you know, um, feedback or um, something that actually gives us motivation to work for something. Um, but I think when most people hear the word stress, they have a negative association with it. And we think of when it tips the bar and becomes, you know, too much and we start having negative effects. Can anyone think of, um, you know, maybe some physical effects that you might experience, uh, either signs or symptoms that you experience when when you notice that you're having too much stress? I personally feel like um, when I'm under a lot of stress, like I tend to get sick a lot faster. So like, like sometimes I'll have like my nieces and nephews like visit our, our house and stuff. And um, the, you know, like kids will bring all sorts of <laughs> diseases back home from school. But uh, for the most part, you know, like I'm fine, I'm healthy. But when I know like I'm under a lot of stress, um, I tend to get sick like very, very quickly. Um, so, it, you know, um, that's something that comes to mind. Absolutely. Good point. Yep. Decrease, you know, susceptibility to illness, um, decreased immune system, right? How about tension headaches? Anyone get uh, either migraines or some kind of tension headache in the back of your head or muscle tension, tight shoulders, tight muscles, anything else physical? I yeah, do. Jenny mentioned, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, um, I do get those things you mentioned. Um, I really don't get migraines a lot, but I just get a feeling that it's just like my brain is full. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just my back hurts a lot uh, when I'm under stress. But yeah, that those are the two ones I notice usually. Sure, good, thank you. And Austin, you were gonna share from the chat? Yeah, Jenny uh, was just saying, um, something that, that, that dovetails off of that really nicely that um, physical pain uh, is a, a symptom there and uh, also racing thoughts. Okay, and that's um, from the um, cognitive perspective, right? And we can talk, let, let's go ahead, have people throw out, you know, behaviors. Do you notice that you act differently when you're under too much stress? Do you withdraw? from people or do you need to be around people? Do you notice a change in your behaviors? Do you notice a change in your emotions? Crying a lot or, um, you know, up and down, moods up and down, right? Um, and then cognitive, right? Are you, what thoughts are you having? Those ruminating thoughts that were mentioned, that's great. Anyone else have in any of these categories, physical, behavioral, emotional, cognitive, any like clear signs that you know, it's just too much. Okay, Jim's saying tiredness or sweating, yep, fatigue. Um, some people sleep a lot when they're under too much stress. Some people can't sleep when they're under too much stress. It's really individual. Anyone else wanna share? Yeah, Jenny's like saying in the chat now, uh, definitely grumpier when they're stressed out, withdraw socially, um, sometimes just, you know, uh, being withdrawn um, because of that. Mm -hmm. 
And Jenny, if you want to, I'm happy to to report out your uh, your sharing. Um, but if you want to click the little blue thing in the chat that directs your chat to everyone, that's Ooh, yeah. that's fine too. I, I'm happy for it to just come to me right now. You're DMing me, so that's why I'm I'm sharing your chats. Yes, yes, good point too. Yes, if you'd like to share in the chat, it would be great to share with the group. If you could. Um, in the two, right, when you've got the blue box, um, reply to everyone if you'd like. Otherwise, we can share for you. Um, Lou. I don't have that option. I only have uh, Carol, Zoe, and Austin to send um, a direct message to. I don't see everyone. Oh, interesting. Okay, that might just be a function that we are the hosts. And so, yes, so it sounds like we will have to read out. Thank you. Um, and Luke, um, welcome, Luke. Um, he was saying uh, can't do the work as efficiently, so it feels less efficient, probably because you're burdened, overburdened, right? Good. Okay. And so now that we've talked about what that too much stress looks like, um, I do like to mention the stress continuum. As I said, I mean, we all experience stress every single day. Not always does it put us over the edge, so to speak, with bringing on anxiety or depression or overwhelm. Um, we see through this continuum on the x-axis, x-axis, we have the stress, or you could think of it as like the challenge level, the level of challenges you're having in your life. And then on the y-axis is um, performance or happiness or help, how you're feeling. And so we see that too little stress can result in boredom. Um, you know, there's little motivation. There's not a lot going on. And honestly, the only good example I can think of with this is maybe when I was in high school or, you know, any of the lower school um, times and, you know, you can't wait till summer and then you get to summer and there's not much going on. Um, and so by August, you're just ready to go back to your routine and have a little something going on. That's the, that's when I can think of, I can't think of another time that I had such low stress where I was bored. Um, but then you see also that we have that area of optimal stress, that good stress, you stress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, where it is motivating. I mean, do we have any folks who have experience with either being an athlete or a performer, um, maybe a music performer or like speech or debate or doing things in work where you do presentations and you get those butterflies in your stomach. Um, but again, it's enough stress feeling like it's important that we're going to put um, the work we need to put into it to prepare so that we're at this optimal peak performance. And that's great. That feels wonderful, amazing. Um, and then though, when we have too much stress accumulating from maybe too many sources, um, then it does tend to have a negative effect on our performance. It ha Then we get those negative, you know, physical, behavioral, emotional, cognitive um, signs and symptoms that we are just experiencing too much stress, it's overload. Um, again, this is where we start to have either physical problems or mental health concerns as a result. So, um, you know, at Hopkins, we know it's, you know, such a high achieving institution. And so I, I think there's a pressure and a feeling that we always must operate in that optimal, that peak performance, but that's not always the way that life is and life throws us challenges. And we have different experiences in life. So we just want to help you know your resources, know some, uh, have like kind of like a toolbox um, for managing these demands so that, you know, we can, we can move throughout this continuum. And again, try to stay in a good place for the most part, but know that this movement is normal and natural and, uh, and have some strategies to deal with that. And so, um, you know, we, we had us all think about what are the competing demands for you? What do you have going on? Um, we talked about how this can be perceived as stress, having so much going on that you feel overwhelmed maybe. And so what are, let's look at what are the, some of the things that exacerbates or increases um, the competing demands in our life? And so 
again, being stretched beyond capacity, being asked to do maybe too much at work or in home, um, you know, taking on too much. It's either that it's given to you or maybe you're you're saying yes to things because it might seem like a, a good opportunity or a good idea at first. And then you realize you've taken on too much. Um, constantly being interrupted makes it really hard to get tasks done. Um, not seeking timely support, feeling like you have to do it on your own. Um, procrastinating, it's a big one. I'm a procrastinator. Anyone else, uh, you can do a reaction maybe where you raise your hand or if you want to just raise your hand or give me a thumbs up. Um, do we have any procrastinators in the house? Um, you know, there's so many reasons why a person would procrastinate. Um, many times it is a high achiever, high functioning person who, you know, at the heart of it, I mean, again, there's many, many reasons, but um, you know, there can be a fear of not being perfect, a fear of failure. Um, and so we we put these things off. Um, also can exacerbate is a lack of organization, um, email overload. Oh my goodness, this one speaks to me. Um, and then there's personal barriers. There's things happening in your life. You might be going through grief or have physical illness or have a person that you're caring for. Um, either, you know, an adult or a child or uh, someone close to you with illness, that can be a huge strain um, and or financial barriers. And that can be very stressful. Is there anything else that anyone wants to share things that exacerbate your competing demands and therefore exacerbating your feeling of stress or overwhelm? Yeah, not having enough me time or, you know, individual time for yourself, for sure. Anyone else? You touched on this a little bit, Carol, but just reminded me of all the social ideas of, you know, what, I love that meme that, um, you know, is sort of like these ideas of how clean your house should be came from mid-century, mid-20th century when one person stayed at home often, you know, it's like these social conventions of, or expectations of uh, what things should look like. And that puts a lot of pressure on us, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this idea that everything has to be perfect and the social media only showing the highlight reel. I'm sure everyone has probably heard of this, how everyone is only putting like the great stuff out there. Um, and then we, we all feel like we're not as good as that person or should be doing better. And then we're adding more to our plates. Um, and yeah, it is, it's extremely overwhelming. Um, great point. Yeah. So, all right. Now that we've, um, identified, you know, what are these challenges? What, what are the competing demands? What does it feel like when these things get so overwhelming and stressful? How might we feel um, knowing that it's okay to manage and to swing through that stress continuum? There's going to be good days and bad days, but let's make sure we have the tools um, to be able to get ourselves to mostly feeling good about things. Um, so what are the barriers to changing your work life or your academic life or finding more harmony in it? You know, there are these things, um, you know, lack of control, right? Um, lack of resources sometimes. It's easier in the short run to stick to whole, old habits. Something in motion stays in motion, right? And so we're chugging along and we know that, you know, maybe we want to make change, but change can be hard. Um, and so it feels like one more thing to do, just another thing to add onto our already full plate. Uh, sometimes we don't see the choices and we need help identifying what are our choices? What are the actual options? Um, are we unwilling to make trade-offs? Because we only have, we all only have 24 hours in a day and we need to sleep. We need to meet our basic needs, right? Um, but so then, you know, finding those times where there is some places where we can manipulate and move things, um, move priorities. 
And then um, another thing that's difficult is thinking that drastic change is the only solution. Um, and that's not, you know, I think a lot of people can sometimes think it's like an all or nothing or, um, for example, when talking about like cleaning a house or cleaning an area of your house or your office, like we are just so overwhelmed by the sheer volume of things we don't know where to begin. And they call it like the what paralysis of analysis, where we just get ourselves stuck thinking that, well, you know, cleaning this office is going to take four hours. And I just I don't have four hours. Well, sometimes we need to make those mini, those micro changes and maybe 20 minutes, a 20 minute concerted effort into cleaning a little portion of the office, you know, that time will add up over time, right? So being okay with not having to have a finished product all the time, being okay with making little progress step by step. And so, you know, I, I like this um, flow chart um, you know, <laughs> do you want to be happy? <laughs> you know, let's make change. Where can we make change? And and if we don't want to be happy or we're okay with what we're doing, then keep doing what you're doing. But if not, let's make change. Um, and so I always encourage folks to, at the very core, like we are all individuals and what is most important to me might not be most important to you and vice versa. Um, and so I encourage folks to really reflect on your values. Think about what is most important to you. And then think about your routine over the course of a day or even the week or even a month. Where are you spending your time? If, the mo if you say the most important thing in your life to you is a relationship or family or um, connecting with people, social well-being. Um, but then you look at where you're spending your time and you're only giving yourself two hours every month. Like you go, you meet up with friends or family or go on a date night, like once a month for two hours, you let yourself have two hours on a Saturday night. Um, then I'm willing to bet that you're probably not too happy with how you're spending your time because you're saying that you value that at the very top, but the time that you're spending is very little. And again, not telling you to make drastic changes, not, but saying let's, let's make little improvements, you know, or maybe you say your health is the very most important, but you are not making time for a medical appointment or taking care of yourself, physical activity. I mean, I'm guilty, guys. I um, I love doing these workshops because it reminds me of like also my to recommit to myself. Um, so think about this, and and if people are willing to share, you know, think about your values. What is important to you? Some people, you know, spirituality, and whether that is. Uh, a religious practice, and it can be, but it, spirituality does not have to be. Just knowing that things, there are things that are bigger than just yourself um, is a part of thinking of spirituality, um, you know, professional goals. So sometimes I have folks when I meet um, individually, um, write down, you know, what are your top priorities? Let's rank um, a top five. And then let's look at your schedule, your calendar. How are you spending your time? And then again, not saying, because again, we all have to work. Things cost money. Um, I don't have a choice about working. I need to. Um, and I, you know, the, those hours are dictated by my profession. Uh, and so that can't, I can't change that. But I can change what I'm doing after my work hours, right? Um, I can also change and and be okay with taking my personal days. Use the personal days. Use your sick days and don't feel bad about it. Um, can anyone share with me uh, anything about like, you know, thinking about what do you value and how are you spending your time and what maybe 
is not falling into alignment with, I value this, but my time is spent here. Does anyone want to share that? I mean, you all, we know because you're here, you are EP learners. And we know that I, I believe most of you also have a career. So you've got the demands of work, career, and academics, right? And so I would bet during a typical week, those are taking up a lot of your time. What else is important to you? What else do we need to find time for? Uh, family and friends. Thank you. Who else? I think someone mentioned this earlier about maybe attending uh, like a church. So to me, it would be like, I'll go to yoga and it helps me to breathe and it, it helps me to meditate. Great. Thank you. And and I'd ask maybe, um, so Sina, if you don't mind sharing also, so you were saying like family and relationships are important to you. And are do you feel like at current, at present, are you spending you know, given things that are non-negotiable that cannot change time-wise, like, are you happy with the amount of time that you're spending or the way that you're balancing or keeping in harmony um, those relationships? Well, I get to talk to my parents over the phone if I like, but um, when it comes to my dad, it would be a few minutes a day. Um, I am a full-time job worker and also with school and also living um, by myself. It's, it is hard to see them in person often. Um, and and it's not like I can go home after work because of traffic and stuff. So all of that accumulated. I'm not able to see my family as much as I want to. Um, so just not having that option is... Um, it does make me sad often. Mm -hmm. And friends too, they're, they have their own work schedule or life. Um, so um, just with my tight schedule, it's hard for me to make plans with family or friends and um, just hang out. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for sharing that um, and I just pulled up the chat because I saw a couple notifications. And so um, Jenny was saying, um, spending time for herself, but in different ways, like physically, um, she says she needs to work out and be healthy, you know, moving your body. And I talk with people about physical movement. It doesn't necessarily have to be exercise. Um, it could be stretching, it could be um, walking, getting in some steps, you know, parking further away from uh, the place that you are going to, um, and then mentally needing to relax and decompress. Yes, um, and mindfulness. And um, I hope everyone knows about the Calm app. I'll be talking that about that in the resources. Um, and then uh, Jenny's saying she always sacrifices sleep first. And um, Yes, but sleep is so necessary and a big part of self-care. Um, we know as adults, um, it's recommended about seven to nine hours of sleep on average for the average adult. Um, we don't always get that, right? Um, and But sleep can impact everything. It can, you know, uh, make you feel terrible physically or mentally. It can make everything seem so much worse. Um like too much stress, um, too little sleep can really impact everything in your life. Um, so yes, um, be careful with that. Take care of yourselves, um, for sure. So, um, I do, 
want to keep an eye on the time. I think we have 15 minutes left and that's scaring me because it means I have to hurry up. Um, <laughs> so uh, there's a time management tool called the Eisenhower matrix. Really, it's like a decision making, um, prioritizing tool. Um, you know, it, it has, it's a quadrant. So you have urgent, not urgent, important, and not important. And so obviously, when you're looking at different demands on your time, things you need to do, the urgent and important in the um, upper left quadrant would obviously be stuff that you have to prioritize. And then we look at um, important, but not urgent, you know, let's schedule that, let's get organized, let's put that, oh, I see schedule is spelled wrong, sorry about that. Um, but uh, make sure that you <laughs> schedule it. Um, and then uh, urgent but not important, you know, can you delegate it? Can Do you live with a roommate and maybe you split up tasks or at work? Do you have folks that can either be your backup or, or someone, you know, you can split up tasks with? And then not urgent, not important. Um, it's those things you shouldn't do. I think that's a bit harsh, um, but I would say... Um, just like in the food pyramid at the top with the fats, oils, sweets, um, you know, it's just uh, things that they recommend that you do less of or, you know, only if you have like super free time. So um, just, I would say not things you shouldn't do. We're not preachy. I'm not telling you what you should and shouldn't do. Um, but I'm just saying like maybe minimize those, especially if your time is at a premium. Um and then just rethinking your routine. Um, everyone can read the slides here. Like, where can we make cuts or adjustments? Um, you know, can we drop activities that are sapping your time and energy and that are just like not useful for you? Rethink errands, improve efficiency at work or at home in your personal life. Um, can we check two boxes at once? I do a lot of health education programming and we have eight dimensions of well-being that we cover. And so when I can accomplish um, social well-being by, you know, getting a group together, um, I can improve uh, mental well-being by, uh, you know, maybe I'll do um, a stress management activity. Um, and maybe that stress management activity is some learning, some cognitive portions, but then some, uh, maybe I bring in a yoga instructor. So I can check three boxes all at once. Um, so being efficient and thinking about doing things that cultivate a couple of things that you are hoping to accomplish. Um, and can you, can you delegate things? Um, and if not, challenge yourself, why not? Uh, sometimes we don't, again, we don't have a choice sometimes. Um, so negotiating for change, um, you know, let's just, just think about these things. Um, it, it, you know, mark off some time to think about, you know, what's the ideal way to manage work and non-work priorities? Um, what changes can I make to achieve this goal? Let's break it down. Um, what's the least amount of change I could live with and be okay with, right? Who is a key player involved in making these changes? Is it talking to your boss, uh, your director? Is it Negotiating with a partner? Um, is it negotiating with family? Um, and then how can you enforce me time? Very important. Uh, trite overuse saying, but it's so true. You cannot pour from an empty cup. If you just deplete and give and give and give, you have nothing left. And you're really not going to be effective in any other area of your life. So again, we have to sustain ourselves as well. It's not selfish. And so I wonder, um, does anyone have any tips or tricks or things that have worked with them in respect to managing your competing demands? What works? You could also identify something you've tried that doesn't work. I did this training at work. I think it was called like getting things done. It it, it kind of paralleled uh, some of the slides you just most recently went over. Wonderful, getting things done. Yeah, it was, um, there was, I think four or five steps. It was more or less, 
making a list and putting it in a tool. I put it in an Excel file. This way it wasn't um, bouncing around in my head, you know, it was on paper. Mm -hmm. And then there was some of the steps like that urgency, that, that Eisenhower matrix, mm -hmm. you know, it had to be done immediately. And there was another column, could it be delegated? And then I created like a column to status it. So I would reference it, you know, and see what needed to be worked. Great. Yeah, I will, uh, to build up on what James said, um, putting um, the things that needs to be done on a, uh, a note, I use my note notes on my phone since I carry my phone everywhere. And there is that sense of that accomplishment um, whenever those things are done. And I would definitely say when I definitely cut off social media, like Instagram, um, I do have um, those times that, can, that I would spend on social media um that I can use it on tasks I have in real life. Great. Thank you both for sharing. And um I have to say organize, organize, organize. That's your friend. Calendars, notes, writing things down, having a checklist, um, keeping yourself organized will really help. And I know some people love you know, the color coding and, and making lists and stuff. And some people feel like it's really restrictive for them. And I say it doesn't have to be restrictive. It's think of it more of like a framework or a guideline that can just help you, again, sorting tasks that you have to do. Um, I do want to share quickly. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Hold on, share the big screen. Um, that's not it. Oh, I know what I have to do. Sorry. I just have to escape presentation mode. Oh, it's not working. Um, okay. I'm going to pull it up at the end. It's, um, a new tool that I've been using. Well, not new. It's not new, but, um, and I don't have any sponsorship or anything. It's completely free. It's called Goblin Tools. And um, I love it. It um, You can put in a larger task and it breaks it down into smaller steps. You can, it has a, a tab that says chef and um, I'm not great at meal prepping. And that's a great organizing thing. It's a great time saver during the week. I wish I could do it, but I don't. But um, you could also type in, you know, I have, eggs, cheese, tomato, and bread. What can I make? And it'll give you ideas about recipes. It's like a really cool time-saving, like executive functioning. Um, if you've just got too much going on, it's it's a really cool organizing thing. So I, I do recommend that. It's called Goblin Tools. Um, so, but yes, we do. Um, let's, since I couldn't, I don't know, get out of screen sharing. I'm not sure why I'll figure it out though. Um, one of our objectives was to make a smart goal um, about making change, some kind of change that you're going to make in support of managing competing demands or having better work, academic life harmony. Um, so I think you probably all heard of smart goals they are specific, they are measurable, they are attainable, relevant, and timely. And so would each of you just take a minute or two to think about an action that you want to take? Again, let's make it in relation to what we're talking about, managing competing demands. And I'd love for each of you to create a SMART goal of something that you want to change regarding your competing demands and how will you do it? And again, I'm gonna give you just a minute or two so we can get to resources. 
And just if you can jot down either on a paper or in your phone, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and I'm gonna to love to ask for examples. I will start us off just so that everyone knows that even I need to work on myself. Um, and so I have not been moving my body lately. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and so my smart goal, um, something that I need to change my priorities, make time for, I am gonna start small. And I'm going to say that I am going to move my body. It's probably going to be walking um, for 20 minutes a day. Let's set the bar low three times a week because I'm going from nothing right now, guys. Um, measurable. Um, how will I track the progress or measure the outcome? I'm going to have, I'm going to keep, um, I'm going to put it in my notes and I'm going to track the days that I actually do it. Um, is this reasonable and attainable? Yes, I can find 20 minutes in my day. I'm, I might have to move things around. I might have to get out of bed a little earlier, which I don't like doing, but I'm either going to do it then or I'm going to do it after dinner in the evenings. Um, is it relevant? Is it worthwhile? Yes, it is, because I know that moving my body is important and um, timely. It should include a time limit. Um, I will complete this goal in a month's time doing the 20 minutes for three days a week. And at that time, I'm going to, after I can do it for a month and I've set that habit after 21 days, right? Um, I'm going to increase that to like five days a week. And then I'll, then I'll revisit that goal. Can anyone else share what your SMART goal is? And it's okay if you don't wanna share, but I hope that you've made the SMART goal. It's one of our objectives. Okay, no one wants to start, but everyone give me a thumbs up that you did at least think about a goal that you have and you will commit to our group here that you're gonna you're gonna work towards this goal, improving managing your competing demands. Because you were here, you took the time to be here. Let's do some action. Great. Okay, and so now I'm going to talk about resources that you have. So we have the eight dimensions of um, well-being that Jeju has defined as things that we need to support our learners in. And you can see what those eight dimensions are. Um, I like to encourage folks because I feel like mindfulness um, helps with so many different things. Um, and it can really help you settle and, and really to practice mindfulness, you can do it like in three minutes. Um, and let me get to a resource for you. Um, all Jeju affiliates have premium access for free to Calm. Do not download the app first. Go to calm.com forward slash Jeju. Use your JH or Jeju email, however you do it, um, the Johns Hopkins affiliation email. Once you receive a confirmation email to that account, then you create the account. Then you can download the app. So you can use it on a laptop, you can log into the website and you can use the app, but create the account with your JH credentials email um, on the website first. And when I have time, I go ahead and um, let us listen and practice for three minutes. They have things that are as little as three minutes, as much as 15 minutes, they have master classes. I love, love, love the happiness. Uh, I think it's called Finding Happiness with Sean Acor. It's awesome. Check it out. 
They have bedtime stories. If you'd like someone to read you to sleep, um, that is like a personal preference in my opinion. Um, they have relaxing sounds, all kinds of content. Please, please take advantage of this free resource. Um, we have the wellbeing website, which is wellbeing.jhu.edu. This is the central university portal for all services in wellbeing. Um, you can search by your keyword. You can search by the school that you're affiliated with or the campus and glance at the services that are available to you. We also have a really great blog uh, that our department puts out written um, with material written by students, staff. Um, so if you have interest in writing for our blog, if you have time, um, and that's something that you want to dedicate some time to, um, it's a really great resource. I highly recommend it. Um, your mental health services are JHU consultation services since you all are online and since clinicians are licensed and must serve um, clients in the state where they're licensed, you have, you have uh, um, access to the consultation services and that's the number. I recommend putting it in your phone. Timely Care is also a mental health resource. Um, there's Talk Now, which is 24 seven on demand. Um, talk about anything, anytime. Um, that is not limited to the U.S. If you're an international student, you can use it wherever allows you access to that website. So it would be the country permitting access, not us permitting access. And then scheduled counseling is U.S. Um, based. You find a provider that's licensed in your state. You get 12 visits per year. Um, and they're 45 minute appointments and you can select your provider. We also have short term psychiatry options. Um, and then you would call consultation services to line that up, um, the 443-287-7000. Um, additional mental health services is Thriving Campus, which is a uh, basically a referral uh, community provider search tool. And there are so many, um, you can filter by so many different things, you know, the insurance you have, what methods they use, um, you know, the gender of the provider, uh, so many different ways to filter that search. Um, and Calm, I already talked about, sorry. Um, we have confidential resources. We just, we listen, you decide. Um, it's a helpline, a hotline um, regarding harassment, um, uh, gender-based violence, um, misconduct, uh, stalking, relationship violence. So that that resource is there for you as well, 410-516-7333. I know I'm over time, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Just a couple more slides, I promise. Um, this is my office. Um, we offer programs, events, webinars like this, um, focus on awareness and skill development. Um, I have individual, uh, our staff has individual well-being consultations. We have office hours for just drop-in questions opportunities for you to get involved if you'd like. Um, and that's our website. And we have a weekly well-being newsletter called This Week in Well-Being. This um, is also pictured some of the uh, campaigns that we have, Yawns Hopkins, which is Getting Better Sleep program. Um, contact me about that. Happy to talk with you about that. Um, Safer Sex at JHU, that's a free barrier methods program. And then I ask, I listen, I respect is our consent campaign about healthy relationships and respect and obtaining consent. Um, this is our staff emails. Again, I you'll get these slides. I will give these slides to Zoe who will get them out to you. Um, okay, last slide. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Um, so if you'd like to talk about more topics or have a deeper dive into managing competing demands or setting SMART goals, anything well-being related, um, feel free to set up a one-on-one -on -one well-being consultation. Um, there's our website with the link to viewing the staff. I won't be offended if you don't choose me. You can, though. Um, or you can email me directly with any questions or to schedule. And then I would be so appreciative. Um, if you would scan that QR code, it is, I think it's five questions um, to provide feedback um, about this presentation. And then um, it just helps me improve, um, helps with the content. Um, you might say, Carol, you went over by four minutes. I did not like that. 
And um, I agree, I have to get better with my timing. Um, but I do appreciate you all joining us. Um, I hope you found at least parts of it um, helpful for you. And again, you can use that feedback form to let me know what was most helpful. What do you wish we would have covered and, and we didn't? Um, and again, happy to answer any questions. Please, please email me. And um, I wish you all the best in your pursuit of managing your competing demands. And I, I wish you all the success in your program and your careers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining everyone. Hi, Carol. I had a question actually.